Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the third week of writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, we had a little bit of a snafu last week, and I know some people had difficulty connecting to the class, so ap apologies for that, and I'm glad to see so many of you here this week. Um, and if you did miss last week's class, we do have all the, uh, the archives up to date, uh, so you should be able to find those on the Wikipedia pages. Um, so this week we are going to be looking at uh, at, Wiki at article quality on Wikipedia. How Wikipedia conceives of article quality, what is considered a high quality article and a low quality article, and what the process is in improving articles, what different kinds of processes there are. Um, as you may or may not be aware, there are several different kinds of uh, peer review processes in Wikipedia. And uh, they they have uh, there are sort of different different levels of, of how much diligence you can put into an article and how much review it will get and um, and how prominently it's featured on the site. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, before we get to that, I just want to uh, give a moment, especially because of the technical issues that we had last week, uh, just to see if anyone has any major questions to address. Uh, as always, the lab session is generally the best time to, uh, to get into more detailed questions. Uh, and you also always have the option to, uh, to uh, leave notes on our, discuss our discussion page on Wikipedia or ask your teammates about things. But if you have something that you really would like answered now, please speak up and let me know uh, before we get started. And I'm not seeing anything in the chat window, so uh, I think I'm going to just jump right in and, uh, and talk about the peer review process. So, oh, uh, yes, I see that I am still marked away. Fix that. There we go. Um, so, the, the main, and I'm going to start the, uh, the screen share here. Um, Let's just look at the front page of Wikipedia. Logo. So after Wikipedia had been up and running for a little while, uh, it, became, it became pretty important to figure out what to put on the front page of the site. Um, as you've maybe seen, uh, if you've just gone to wikipedia.org, uh, there's still, here I'll just pull that up. Uh, really quickly. Um, there's a, a very basic home page there which just lets you find the different language editions and, um, and navigate to the one that you want. But this would be a pretty boring front page uh, for each individual site. So the English language Wikipedia uh, gradually started putting various different things on the, on the front page to feature what was growing on the site. And so naturally the question came up how do we determine what articles, uh, what do we consider a high quality article? What is something that we would want to steer people towards to demonstrate the best of what Wikipedia has to offer? So, yes? Okay, oh, I think I see what I did. I, I chose the wrong web sharing. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, so what I yep. So this is more or less uh, what the front page of Wikipedia looked like in the early two thousands uh, before um, before it started getting more detailed to demonstrate some of the things on the site. So um, you can see there's this section for in the news uh, where people are continually updating that to to contain links to articles about things that are in the news. Uh, there's also this section for on this day, so this uh, is a great way to, to feature links to article about things that have an anniversary. Uh, and the did you know section on the left hand side here, this is a nice way for people writing new articles to get to link their article on the front page without them having to be uh, perfect or even, even really thoroughly developed. There's sort of a, a um, 
sort of a medium low bar uh, for the state that an article has to be at before it can be featured in the did you know section and we'll come back and look at that in a little while um, and then there's uh, there's today's featured picture and then as you get down you can see there are these sections for how to get involved with Wikipedia uh, but really the this this top left section from today's featured article this is um, obviously a very important feature of the front page and allows people to, to navigate towards an article that's going to represent Wikipedia to um, when someone visits the site, they're going to see that as being representative of the, the sort of article that they're likely to find on Wikipedia. So, um, in order to in order to meet that need, there was a process developed through uh, Wikipedia's consensus-based decision-making model to put an article up for review when when someone thought that they had work on, worked on an article and thought that maybe it was good enough to be featured on the front page, they could nominate their own article or they could nominate someone else's article. Uh, and say, hey, let's. Uh, what do you think of putting this one on the front page? And there would be a discussion around that. And over time, that uh, the 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 reasons for featuring something or not featuring it were articulated and developed into what are now known as the featured article criteria. So I'm going to type in, uh, as you've probably seen me do before, a shortcut uh, for the featured article criteria. So WP colon F A question mark the question mark being uh, sort of the question of what makes a feature, featured article. Uh, and you can see these shortcuts to this page are listed over here. There are several that all redirect to this, this page, Wikipedia Featured Article Criteria. And so here we have, I think, six, no, four, uh, four general categories of what an article needs to have to be considered of featured quality, meaning the highest quality uh, rating on Wikipedia. Uh, and I'll just read through them, uh, I'll, I'll sort of summarize them really quickly. The first one is about the, uh, the quality of the text. So it needs to be well-written, comprehensive, well-researched. Uh, it needs to be neutral, which is, and, and many of these things, especially neutrality, this is something that's true of all Wikipedia articles. Uh, but it's, it's going to need to be held to a higher standard of neutrality uh, than something that's sort of in development and, uh, and might be in a state of flux before it becomes, uh, before it gets to a point where people really feel that it's highly neutral. Um, and, and the article needs to be stable. So it needs to have achieved a point where if there were any uh, disagree, you know, major disagreements about how to, dis how to structure the article or what sources were worthwhile, that the, the major ones have been worked through and there aren't people frequently going back and forth uh, between different versions of the article and having major disagreements about it. Uh, number two is it follows Wikipedia's style guidelines. And you'll notice throughout these criteria, uh, there are links. And these li anytime you have a question about, well, what, what is meant by this, uh, you should just click on the link, and you'll get a lot more detail about that. In this case, style guidelines links to Wikipedia's manual of style, uh, which I think we've made at least brief mention of so far. There's this very extensive document that's grown up over time. Um, that addresses all kinds of questions about punctuation and grammar and uh, and how to organize articles. So whenever you run into questions like that, there's probably an answer or at least uh, some some useful thinking uh, documented in the manual of styles. So it's a very useful thing to uh, to consult. Um, and specifically, it needs to have a lead section that is concise but that summarizes the entire topic, summarizes everything that's in the article, all the different sec sections in the article. Uh, and uh, I think if we click on this, the more detail on lead section, it's going to tell us that the lead section really should, uh, it should serve, the, it should stand on its own. It, so if someone clicks on the article and just reads the lead section, that they should, um, that they should basically get a complete, not a, not a totally comprehensive, but, um, but that they should feel that they've learned something from just reading that lead section. Uh, the, the article should have an appropriate structure, and appropriate meaning that it's appropriate to that topic. Obviously, an article about a movie is going to have a different structure than an article about a civic organization or uh, a political candidate. Uh, but the structure should be appropriate to whatever that topic is. Um, and w we can uh, get into some of the, the different ways of thinking about that uh, a little later in the class. And it needs to have consistent citations. I've shown you a couple of times uh, how to do 
uh, references on Wikipedia articles, um, and there are actually there are actually different ways of doing references. I've shown you um, what I think is the most straightforward one, but you'll find articles that have a different approach to it. And uh, the 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 rule on Wikipedia is that an article should be consistent within the article. It doesn't need to uh, comply with a specific citation style, but um, but in order to get to the featured article status, it should be consistent between uh, all the references within the article should comply with the same style guideline. Uh, number three, it needs to have it, it. It should have media. This again is appropriate to the content. There are probably a few featured articles out there that don't have any illustrations at all, uh, but that would really be the the exception. Only if an article is just so abstract that there's nothing to be illustrated. Um, but Generally, there should be photographs or diagrams uh, that, that help the reader uh, better understand the topic. And finally, length. Uh, the article should focus on the main topic without going into unnecessary detail. And it should use the summary style, which I think is something that's come up. Uh, I know I've discussed this on the talk page. I think we've discussed it in class. Uh, summary style is another very useful essay that talks about uh, the way to kind of balance a topic and a subtopic. Um, so uh, if, you're, if, if your article is getting very long and detailed, uh, it's often a good sign that it's time to take one of the sections and split it off into its own article and just summarize it within the main article. Anyway, um, as you can see, these, these, these guidelines are, are uh, pretty common sense, I think, from uh, the, the, the general kinds of topics we've been covering in class, and they probably look familiar in in terms of what you're used to looking for in a Wikipedia article, but it really comes in very handy to have them clearly articulated like this when you're making uh, a decision about whether something should be a featured article or not. And to get an idea of that, let's take a look at the current featured article candidates. So on the right, you see this blue navigation box, and I'm going to just click on featured article candidates. And at any time, there are typically a whole lot of different articles. I, I would say probably a, a, a dozen, maybe a couple dozen articles uh, that are up for consideration as featured articles. There is this nice uh, uh, explanation of the featured article process up here at the top. Um, but then if we scroll down past that to the table of contents, uh, we're going to see actually there are quite a lot. There are 32 that are considered current. Uh, and then there are 28 that are older nominations that I guess haven't been decided on yet. So, and if we scroll past the table of contents here, we're going to have to we're going to see the actual nominations. So, um, I'm going to just pick one kind of at random here. Um, let's, I have no idea who this is, but uh, let's click on Alan Walters. So here we have this. Uh, this is the uh, the actual article. So as you can see, and, and in a moment, we're going to look at an article that's actually been through this process. But here you're going to see something that's at least someone considers to be pretty close to, uh, to featured article quality. So you see it's got a nice uh, substantial lead section. Uh, we have a, an info box up here in the right, which summarizes a lot of the, the facts in the article. And from the table of contents, you can see there are, uh, looks like, four different sections before we get to notes and references. Click on those. We're starting to see how it's well illustrated. Um, and then, as we get down to the bottom, you see the the notes section has uh, very nice, consistent formatting. Uh, I'm sure you've seen articles where they're just bare links, where uh, it's it's not at all in any kind of a style that you would find in an academic paper. But these these ones all look uh, nice and clean and easy to read. Uh, and then below that, we see the references section. Uh, and again, looks like nice, clean, consistent formatting. So uh, if we go back to the featured article candidates page, uh, we see, th so this one is, is kind of early in its discussion. First, you see a nomination statement where uh, the, the, uh, the, the person nominating it describes why. So uh, Ian has said uh, this is the first FAC, the, the first featured article candidacy in almost a year. So I guess that means his first nomination in almost a year. Um, and so he gives a little bit of an overview. This fellow had an action-packed career after he transferred to the Air Force. And um, 
usually you'll see a little bit more about sort of the process that's gotten the article uh, to this point. Sometimes an article has had lots of different people working on it. Other times just one person has worked on it. And usually someone will talk about that a little bit, but they don't, they don't necessarily have to. And here we see that uh, someone has already come to support it, support the candidacy. Uh, but even so, this person has left some comments. Oh, he's saying uh, his comments have all been addressed. So there's already been some dis discussion and uh, those comments have all been addressed in the article. This is something that's very common and it's very, very rare. In fact, it may, I would say it probably never happens anymore anyway, that an article would simply be approved as a featured article. Someone always finds a way to improve it in the process. Um, it's, it's not a good idea to nominate something that isn't even close, but it's sort of assumed that when people really start carefully looking at, at whether the article meets all these criteria, that new things are going to come out and the article is going to improve during the, typically the, the few weeks while it's up for discussion. So in the next comment, we see something that, um, that gets to that. So this person didn't say that they oppose the candidacy, but they've, uh, they've left some notes. I've tweaked one or two. Um, and this is something about the, the licensing of the images, but uh, points out that maybe there's an issue with the copyright on one of the images. And so there's a little bit of discussion about that, and it looks like this isn't resolved yet, but it's, it's underway. Um, and then here we have sources review. So there's, there's some people who watch the featured article uh, process and just have a, a very specific thing that they like to make sure of on every image, on, on every candidate. Uh, so this person has reviewed the sources in the article and uh, you know, maybe made sense that they're really uh, supporting the facts that they've been, uh, that, uh, that they're supposedly citing, uh, made sure that all the links in the references are working, things like that. And then uh, I'm going to just scroll down and see if we can find an example where there's a little bit more discussion. So here's one where we're seeing a lot of strike throughs in the midst of the discussion. So that, that's a pretty typical thing where people, uh, someone makes a comment about something that needs improving, and then usually the person who nominated it will uh, address that. And then usually the person who initially made the comment will come back and strike through anything that they feel has been adequately addressed. And then you see uh, the, the nominator typically will say things like done, but they'll generally leave it to the, no the, the person who raised the objection to decide whether or not it should be struck through. So. Anyway, uh, there's, there's plenty to explore here, and I'm not going to go into uh, to more detail on this particular, uh, on, on these particular candidates, but uh, I do think we should uh, take a look at the list of featured articles. So, let's see, I'm going to just click on featured articles. So this is the list of every article that's attained this status on Wikipedia, and it tells us here that out of the 4 million plus articles on English Wikipedia, there are about 4,000 that are considered featured articles, so it's about one in a thousand. Um, that that uh, ratio has actually been roughly the case, I think, through the um, throughout the history of the featured article program. So th it's um, it's it's generally always about one in a thousand articles gets to this status. So it, it really is a, a nice distinction for an article. Um, actually, something I didn't point out before. Let's let's just click on one. I'm going to. So I've scrolled down here a little bit. We've got this content section that breaks everything up into different topic areas. Let's click on education. And uh, let's look at one that I haven't before. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on James E. Boyd. I don't know who this is, but presumably an educator. And I want to point out we've we got a star in the upper right-hand corner. So this gold star indicates that it's a featured article. Uh, you can see as I hover over it, I get something that explains that. And that will actually take us back to the, the list of Wikipedia's featured articles that we were just looking at. Um, and then also, if we click on the talk page, in this top section, we, al we also so we see a, a more detailed um, explanation about the article. So it is a featured article, and it links to where that review of it, as if it where it says identified here. If we click on that, that's going to take us to the discussion where it was identified as a featured article. Uh, but it also tells us, even, even so, even though the article was considered a featured article, it's still not a static thing. It's still something that can be improved. Uh, there, it's, there's really no article on Wikipedia where people uh, feel that nothing could possibly be done to Im improve it. Even a featured article, uh, if it's a, on, an, uh, on a topic that's still changing, of course there are going to be things that come up that require 
the article to be updated, uh, and even on some on an older topic, new scholarship or just uh, new thinking and how to more clearly express it can always uh, come up to improve the article. And then uh, below that, we see this article milestone section. I think we've seen this before. This gives us several different milestones that the article has been through. So in April 2010, it was a good article nominee. And I'll talk about what good article is in a moment. It's a step, uh, it's, it's a step lower than featured article, but also a, a, pretty, um, uh, a, a pretty thorough process for reviewing an article. And then we see in March 2011, it was a featured article candidate, but it was not promoted. So there, uh, and then if we if we click on this, it's going to take us to that dis discussion of the article, uh, and we see the article was was not promoted. So uh, this person made the determination after some discussion that it was that it wasn't up to the standards. Uh, but there was a lot of discussion here, and so uh, when the next person, or maybe it was the same person, nominated it again in June, so about four months later. Uh, they had a lot of information to go on on what people thought needed improving in the article, and so I this is actually a, a pretty common, a common thing that something might be uh, nominated and discussed as a featured article, not promoted, but then that will uh, reinvigorate someone to come back and put some more work into it and re-nominate it at a later time. Uh, and then finally, here we do have a fact from this article appeared on Wikipedia's main page uh, in 2010. Uh, so you notice this is actually before it was nominated as a good article. This is uh, this is actually kind of it's kind of out of order, and I'm not really sure why that is. I'm used to seeing this uh, listed above. Um, but so this is the did you know section. This is uh, so if we click um, if we click on a fact from this article, this shows us what that section looked like on the main page on that day. So. Um, it was basically listed in a section where one sec one um, sentence summarized each of these articles. And let's just click on the date, which is going to take us to... Um, oh, well. Okay, so there is no date to click on uh, for the did you know. But uh, actually, if we I'm going to click on the, the good article nominee date, which will show us what the article looked like at that time. So you can see it's... It's a little bit less thoroughly developed, and then if we view the history, we can go back to, um, let's see, let's go back to April 9th. Scrolling is probably kind of ugly over there, I know, but we'll get there in a moment. So, oh, come on now. Okay, so I'm going to go to April... April 4th was the last change before that did you know nomination so and actually this this is not really a typical an article doesn't have to be nearly this well developed to qualify for for the did you know sa status I believe it has to be uh, 400 words and have something like five citations and a couple of sections it's, it's something on on that level um, so it's a it's a much easier thing to attain uh, let's let, let let's uh, I'm gonna I'm going to show you that process next. So, um, but li before I do that, why don't I pause and see if any questions have come up around the featured article uh, process? Find my chat window. Okay. Well, shout it out, or let me. I can hear you fine. Yes, yes, I meant to cover that. Thank you. Um, so, uh, any article, just like any article, can can always be nominated nominated for featured article status. Any article can also be nominated to be removed from featured art article status. Um, so there, and and there are some. Uh, I, I I believe there's a there's sort of a, a, a periodic process for this where um, there there are folks who will go through and look at featured articles on kind of a rotating basis and, and check them over after a couple of years. Um, but really, anyone can take a look at an article and, and say, this article may have gotten through the process before, but it no longer meets those standards. And the, the reason that can happen is if it's, uh, if it's a, an evolving topic, often 
uh, people lose interest and nobody has updated it for a while. So if it's uh, you know say it's say it's like a, um, a politician who is who has an active career. So they might have there might have been a featured article when they were a state senator, but since then they've been elected governor, uh, and you know maybe there's been uh, some major piece of legislation that they passed or something like that. And if those things haven't gotten really adequate coverage, then even though the article used to be pretty good, it's no longer uh, it, it's no longer going to be at that state, and it, it'll take a lot of work to do that. So, your choices would either be to put the work into bringing it up to date at a featured al featured article level, or else to talk about removing the status. And sometimes, just by nominating it for removing that, that might be the thing that uh, that gives someone the motivation they need to to go back and um, and improve the article. Uh, another reason might be that those those featured article criteria have evolved and strengthened over time, uh, and also the interpretation of them. So you know the idea of what might be meant by excellent cr prose uh, has has kind of increased over time as well. So if an article was promoted to featured article in 2007, it may be very well be that it was never at a state that would really meet the current standards of what a featured article should be. So that might be another reason. That it would that it would lose that status, uh, and then I guess it also is possible that if something controversial came up in the article, uh, and there had been very extensive efforts to keep it up to date, um, but there are people who really strongly disagree about important things, uh, it could it could lose that stability that it once had, and you know you could find that one person is trying to uh, trying to cover part of the topic in one way and another person is really actively arguing with them and they're, it, it doesn't look like they're going to reach a resolution to that anytime soon. So again, the ideal solution to that would be to get to some resolution, uh, but if, if that can't be done uh, in sort of a reasonable amount of time, then it might lose, that, lose the featured article status as well. Uh, and if, if you're curious about the process for that, it's very similar to the process for gaining featured article status to begin with, and you could find it through the links to the uh, featured article, uh, to the, the criteria and the list of featured articles that I showed you before. Uh, and actually, this is reminding me, I, uh, I forgot to mention uh, this week, uh, Sarah, as usual, has set up the Etherpad uh, to keep track of links like this, uh, links to things like the featured article criteria and uh, the Did You Know pages and all the things that I'm, I'm talking about. And uh, it really it helps a great deal if any of you are uh, interested in watching that page, if you can add things yourself. Uh, Sarah is sometimes taking care of several things at once, so if you see that I've mentioned a link and you think it might be useful to you or to other students, uh, please um, type it in or copy and paste it into the Etherpad. Um, and Oh, that's wonderful. So maybe the key is actually that I should not ask people to do it. <laughs> wonderful. Voice questions are welcome, uh, and chat questions are welcome. Whatever, whatever works best for you. Uh, and I really do, I, I really do mean it when I ask for questions. I, I've, you know, I, I've, I've seen lots of good questions going by on our discussion page, and uh, I, I, I'm really interested in where you're all coming from, uh, as we have we have students with such a wide variety of backgrounds um, that these these class sessions really can get a lot more interesting when. People are bringing up their own. Uh, you know, maybe you maybe you've seen a featured article and you have questions that are specific to that, or um, you know, maybe an article that you've been working on connects up with what I'm talking about. So please do uh, feel free to jump in with questions. Uh, and you also, uh, if you want to type in a question, you don't have to wait for me to offer a break. Feel free to just use the chat window for that. And um, and if I don't get it, uh, I, I generally won't see it myself. Sarah will see it, and uh, and I'll get to it when I.
Nope, uh, that's, that's right. Anyone can. But uh, I think the... Well, yes, I guess there is a little more to say about that. Um, nominating an, uh, an article is... Uh, there, there, there are two things that, that, that should go into that. One is that you... Um, that you that you that you sort of have a base and and none of this 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 isn't this isn't a hard and fast rule but it's it's best if you're pretty familiar with the article if you've at least done some work on it you don't have to be the the main author but it you know you're you're kind of familiar with some of the issues that have come up in constructing the article uh, and also that you're pretty familiar with the featured article process so you've uh, either participated in discussions about other featured articles in the past um, or you've read up on the, the various pages about featured articles. Uh, and then the other thing is really it, it's, a, it's a commitment to seeing the process through. So you don't just nominate an article and then go away and sort of see, see what happens. It's not, it's not like an application process where, you know, or like a, like a class where you submit a paper and then just wait um, to get it back from the teacher with either a pass or fail or, or a grade. Uh, it's more that you that you're saying, well, I think it's there or it's pretty close, but you're also willing to work with other people to improve it if they if they disagree or if they find things that you didn't think of. So uh, and 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 sometimes that can actually <laughs> sometimes it can be a little bit maddening because there are people who will approach the review process uh, with the idea that it's not their job at all to improve the article, but just to give you feedback. Um, so they might even go so they might. Uh, they might make notes about where they've found typos in the article, and as the nominator, you might be sitting there thinking, "Well, why didn't you just fix the typo? It's a wiki." But uh, I think there are a lot of people who who feel that that's that the the process is sort of more um, that they have more integrity if they're if they're giving feedback and waiting for you uh, to make those changes. So you know, some people do and some people don't. Uh, when I'm reviewing an article, uh, I I tend to if, if something is pretty easy to fix, I'll do it myself. And if, uh, if I want someone who's a little more familiar with the topic or has better access to the sources or something like that to work on it, then I'll leave a comment. Um, so I would say in, in almost all cases, the person doing the nomination is the main person who's worked on the article. Uh, but you will find occasional, uh, occasional times where someone sees that someone else has been working hard on an article and has watched it improve over time and they will nominate it on their behalf. Uh, but even so, if you're the nominator, you're the one who's basically uh, committing to working on the article while it goes through that process. So, um, okay, before I get to the did you know section, I, I want to just briefly mention the good article process because it's so similar to the featured article process. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, um, but uh, this is something that would be uh, more, more within reach. Uh, it was actually designed specifically to be more within reach than the featured article process, uh, something that's a little bit less onerous. Um, so a good article also has a list of criteria. So I'm going to click on good. I've, so I went to WP colon GA or Wikipedia good articles to get to this page and you see a similar navigation box on the right. I'm going to click on its criteria and scroll down and here you see why I was remembering six. This, there are six criteria here but they're very very similar in structure to what you see in the feature article criteria. Um, you'll just find little differences like I, I believe in the featured article criteria it says that the prose is excellent and here it says that the prose is clear and concise um, so you'll find that the language is a little bit toned down it's not um, it's not meant to be as high a standard uh, it needs to be uh, I, I think the let's see I'm looking for one right now yeah so number three says that the article should be broad in its coverage so that's different than comprehensive uh, it may be that uh, that there's a section or two that really could use a lot of work to to build it out, but as long as uh, as long as the article, as it says here, addresses the main aspects of the topic and stays focused on the topic without going into unnecessary detail, that's good enough for good article. So, uh, and then in also the process is uh, is more streamlined than featured article. With good articles, all it requires is for one person to review it. So the nomination process is similar. You would uh, you would 
click on this nominations page and that'll give you instructions on how to nominate an article but uh, then it's going to go into a queue and only and, and, and one person will choose to look at the article and compare it to those criteria as opposed to the featured article process where anyone can jump in uh, and and it takes place on the articles talk page so if we skip down to the nominations list let's look at a, a current nomination so driverless tractor this one is currently on hold so I'm gonna click on the articles talk page uh, and th and this actually before I do that it says this article is waiting improvements before it's passed or failed so the person has reviewed it and they've left some comments and those comments have not yet been addressed so if we go to the talk page we're gonna see what that looks like so there are several sections in the in the talk page where people have before the nomination where people have already been discussing various things but down here number five you see GA review so we'll click down to that the structure here is pretty similar to what we saw on the featured article review but this is basically just a back and forth between the one person who nominated it and the one person who's reviewing it uh, occasionally other people will jump in and comment here uh, and there's really there's nothing wrong with that but it's uh, and and it would it would be especially common if a number of different people have worked on the article so several people might work on addressing the things brought up by the reviewer uh, but it it is a little bit um, sort of out of the norm for someone else to come in and raise objections um, it's you know generally people will refer to the reviewer to uh, to make the decisions there might be there might be cases where someone comes along and really has a lot of expertise in that subject matter so uh, so they might jump in with a comment uh, but let's look at the did you know process because this really is this is really different and this is uh, much more accessible if you're if you're just starting an article or if you're working on an article that uh, was just a stub when you found it so I'm gonna Let's see. Uh, Wikipedia DYK, which is short for Did You Know? And here again, you'll, you'll see a, a bit of an overview of what this is about. And uh, you'll see what the, what the rules are, what is eligible. So I mentioned this in passing before. So there are four basic criteria. So, this, so now this is really going to look different. This is really a much lower standard than what we saw with Featured and, and Good Articles. So it needs to be new. The article either needs to be brand new or it needs to have been uh, um, very substantially expanded. So if it, uh, if I'm actually not seeing this written here, and I actually haven't gone through this in a while. It's possible that this has changed. Oh, here we go. Uh, the, the prose portion of the article has been expanded fivefold, so it needs to be five times as much. So it, it was a, a very short, if the article has been around for a while, it needs to have been very short and um, someone needs to have very greatly expanded it for it to qualify for did you know uh, it needs to be long enough so what does it mean by long enough well it needs to be at least 1500 characters um, and uh, it, so this is, a, this is a very different standard again than being comprehensive or uh, I forget exactly what it was in, in good article but it, it so there th for did you know there could be really substantial things that are left out that someone's still working on uh, but it's still considered worthwhile to be uh, linked on the front page. So someone might be interested in seeing what an article, a, a, a reader of Wikipedia might be interested in seeing an article that's under development. It's sort of a different standard than saying, here, we're going to show you the best stuff on our site. Um, and so, and then there's also number five here is something that came along where lots and lots of people were nominating their own articles for the Did You Know, but weren't uh, reviewing them so there was a huge backlog of articles where uh, you know it was going weeks and weeks into the past which isn't really ideal for something that's intended to be a quick reward for new articles so there's a, uh, a, a relatively new and well I think I think a couple years old now requirement that you review another article for did you know before you submit one of your own so basically every time you submit one of your own you should always you should always review someone else's first it uh, uses the, the concept of quid pro quo, which is a little odd because um, it's, and I'm sure it says it in here, uh, it's, it's very important that there not be sort of the sense that, uh, that you're positively reviewing someone else's in order to get a positive review on your own. 
it's not that kind of quid pro quo, but it is uh, the idea that you're putting in the work of reviewing someone else's uh, before you're asking someone else to put in the work of reviewing your own. And so then there, uh, there's a section here on the hook. So the hook is that sentence that, um, that summarizes the article. So did you know that dot, dot, dot is sort of the, the, the general format. So generally speaking, you're going to be looking to pull out the most interesting uh, little fact in an article, uh, something that's going to grab someone's attention. And there are some standards around what that should be. So that fact definitely has to be very well referenced. You don't want to pull something. There, there could be a, a few things that, are, uh, that, are, that aren't referenced all that well in the article. That wouldn't disqualify the article on the whole. But you don't want one of those things to be the, the piece that you're featuring on the front page. Um, so, and then down here we've got the DYK process. So I think I've I, I spent a little longer on the featured article process than I meant to. I'm not going to uh, go into this in in any depth right now. But um, but this really is a this this is a great uh, process for you to get familiar with as you're starting. What I do want to segue to, which is I want to introduce uh, the main assignment of the class. Um, so if you haven't already. Uh, chosen an article and started started focusing your efforts on it. That's what we're uh, uh, that's that's the main assignment for the class that we're going to take a look at now. And uh, the DYK process is a great thing to think about as you do that. If you're starting a new article or if you're expanding a tiny little stub, uh, you may find that you want to bring it through the did you know process as you go along. So I encourage you if you're interested in uh, in getting some broader review of your article uh, to. Uh, to take a look here, and uh, and feel free to ask questions about it on the class discussion page or um, or in the lab session. So let me pause and see if any questions have come up, and I'm gonna pull up the homework assignment page while I'm doing that. Yes, yeah, th that's we, we're definitely going to get into that. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, what is a stub? I probably should have defined. Uh, I'm going to just put in, it, put in a link here, wp colon stub. Uh, it's, it's basically a one-sentence article, usually one sentence, one or maybe two or three. Uh, so this, this page is going to describe what is meant by that. The, the idea comes from, uh, I guess, early on in Wikipedia's evolution. Um, when they were, when when we were really building an encyclopedia out of nothing, there was sort of this question: Well, what if, like, if we, what if? Eventually, we should have an article about apples. Um, you know, it's a fruit that lots of people eat. It's a good thing to have an encyclopedia, right? I don't have uh, the expertise or the time right now, really, to to write a thorough article on it. But it's probably a good idea to just have sort of a placeholder for it. So let's just start one. So I would write like an apple is. Um, is a fruit. It grows on a tree. It, it has seeds, and it's often red or green. Um, you know, some, something like that. So there, there's enough information in that one sentence to provide some context. What is this thing? Uh, and someone who came to the page wouldn't feel that it was totally useless. Maybe they didn't know what an apple was, and now they have some idea. It can also be put in a category. So it could be put in a category of fruits uh, or things that grow on trees, uh, and people could navigate around and find, you know, pears or oranges. So. Um, uh, there, there's, there's, there's kind of a, an idea of what an article needs to be a stub, like in order that, that it should be created at all. So it should be, it, it does need to be on something that meets Wikipedia's general notability guideline uh, and things like that. And it, it needs to be a sentence that's phrased in a way that's sort of a, a, a general overview of it. That's basically what a stub is. Um, the second question there was also an interesting one, and I lost track of it, Sarah, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I th Right. Yeah. No, I, I don't think we do want to go into that because it does get very, very complex and it's something that you don't necessarily need to know much about. Uh, I'm just say a sentence or, or two about it. Let's, let's put in WP colon bots. So uh, as you can see, these a lot of these really are intuitive once you sort of get a sense of, uh, of the format. Um, so a, a bot is an automated process that makes edits to Wikipedia and they generally are, they're, they're very carefully considered before they're created and deployed. So uh, they'll, they'll do things that are generally considered uncontroversial. They'll look for patterns uh, that are widely viewed as vandalism, like just adding swear words to an article or something like that. Or sometimes they do maintenance tasks for things that support things like the, like the good article nomination process, uh, where they're sort of tidying up the various pages that are involved in that and archiving things. So, uh, but uh, to get, so there was a question there about the quality rankings. Um, and let's see, I, I want to, I'm going to just go to something that's, uh, that's familiar to me. So, uh, so this is a, an article that I've worked on, um, that I, I wrote most of. And I want to show you by going, so here we don't see a, a gold star in the upper right or a green circle, so we know it's not a good article or a featured article, but um, probably it does have some quality ranking assigned to it. Uh, and if you want to know what that is, you have to click on the talk page. And here in the, t and those are, ha the, those lower levels below good article are handled by wiki projects. So we have these four different wiki projects that the article is part of, Wiki Project Oregon, Wiki Project US Public Policy, uh, indig Indigenous Peoples of North America, and Gambling. So uh, lots of different topic areas that kind of intersect on this one topic. And we can see that all of them have it rated start class. So that's a quality rating. Uh, and if we click on the show button for any one of these, we'll see that reflected down here. And there's a little bit more context for it. This article has been rated start class on the project's quality scale. And let's just click on the words quality scale. So each project is going to have its own, uh, its, its own sort of outline of what is required for these different quality levels for an article. And they're generally fairly consistent, but they will have sometimes very specific um, criteria. So if something for something like Wiki Project Film, uh, there might be, for something to be at B class, which is the one just below good article, uh, they might have uh, a list of different sections that must be there for it to be B class. So it needs to have, um, you know, a list of the main characters, it needs to have a history of the production of the film, uh, and it needs to have, uh, um, you know, an image uh, from the film or, so, you know, something like that. I'm just making that up. But there might be things that are very specific to that topic area. That's, and that's why they're handled by the wiki projects. Um, so each wiki project will have a page like this that gives you some descri description of what goes into each status. There's B class, C class, and then start and stub. So an article will typically start as a stub and then grow through start class, C class, B class, good article. But it's not at all necessary for it to go through every one of those steps. And the way that things are evaluated for the lower steps is nothing like what we just saw. It's entirely one person's uh, quick uh, evaluation of the article. Do they meet these basic standards? And, and what you'll find is that people generally don't have any interest in quibbling over whether something is B class or C class. So, uh, you know, these are, these are much more sort of, the, the purpose of these is much more to manage the flow of improving topic area, like articles in a topic area, than it is to reward writing good articles or, or things like that. So you don't really find arguments breaking out about, uh, about whether something is B class or C class, or whether it's C class or start class. And um, what you do find is that articles will grow since they have, uh, it's actually much more common that an article would have lots and lots of work done on it and nobody is bothered to consider whether it's really still at start class or whether it should be at B class. 
So uh, one thing that you'll often see is that if someone in Wiki Project Oregon reassesses this and decides that it's B class, um, that that person, even though they're not a member of these other Wiki projects, will just take it upon themselves to update it in all four of those Wiki projects, or else that someone else will come along and see, oh, it's B class for Wiki Project Oregon and it's start class for these other ones. Uh, and then they might notice, okay, the B class rating came more recently. So I'm going to just go through and update it for those ones as well. Um, so that piece uh, is going to be important to explaining this, this final project. So I'm going to, oh, actually, I haven't linked the final project yet. I, I need to come back and do that. But it's on our week three homework assignment page. So you click on week, week three. Uh, the first assignment is to upload a photo to Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons and put it on your user page or in an article. This is not part of the final project. This is just sort of a weekly thing. Um, and uh, that's something I think, I think most of you will be able to figure out for yourselves if you click on upload this photo um, it'll, and, and follow the instructions that, that come your way. You should be able to figure out how to upload something. It is important to know that you're uploading something that's uh, freely licensed or in the public domain. But I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to figure out on your own, or, or feel free to ask questions if you're having trouble. But after that, we have this get started on the final project. So this gives us a, a description. The main idea here is that you're going to choose an article, which is either a new topic where there is no article, or it's an article that already exists that you can see the possibility for some improvement to. And you're going to take that article one step on that quality ranking scale. Now, there's, there's a, a natural question here is how do, we, um, how, do we, how do we get that determination of whether it's moved from start class to C class? And really, that's going to be your judgment. So um, when you're looking at the article, if it's already been ranked, so I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to do a, a, another tab here and go back to my uh, Columbia River artic Gorge article. Um, whoop. So if, if, if this were the article that we chose, that, that you chose to do your assignment on, you would want to go to the talk page and see how is it rated. So you see that it's start class. And then you should, you should go and actually look at the start class definition by clicking on one of the project's quality scales. Uh, or you could just click on the words start, which I think would, oh no, this, I'm sorry. That's going to give you a list of articles that are start class. Uh, but no, so the, the quality scale, and, and read through it. So we're going to look at the start class here. It's an article that's developing, and, and let's expand it. Um, and compare that to what the article looks like and kind of make sure that, that it really is uh, properly at that start class. You might also want to look at the article's talk page and see if there's been any discussion about its ranking. And in this case, there has been. There's this section, Notes for Expansion, uh, which I... I left my, my own notes here, but then this, this person about movies came along and said that he had reassessed it as start, and it was stub class before that, but he described why, why he put it start class and not C class. So what would be needed to improve it to C class? So if you're going to work on the article, if you can find some comments like this, uh, that's going to be a great guide to the improvement. You're usually not going to see something like that, but it's always worth looking for it. Uh, and anyway, you're, you're project then is going to be over the remainder of the course by week six is to improve the article in a way that moves it from start class to, B to uh, C class. So you're also going to want to look at the quality scale for the next step higher than where it is and read through that. Uh, and do things from one week to the next that advance it towards that next quality range. When you, uh, when you submit your final project at the end of the class, you'll have an opportunity to, um, to describe what you did uh, and why you think it's, um, it's an improvement uh, that's, that, that's enough for that final project. So what we're really going to ask you to do is give your own evaluation of whether it's been improved from one level to the next, and, uh, and then we'll give you feedback on that. So... Um, I think I'd like to, to pause and ask, uh, I, I, I'm really curious how many people 
have a general sense of what article they might work on. We've had our, our homework assignments uh, to date have, have had you looking at different articles. Uh, we've been encouraging you to look at articles in the open educational resources space. Uh, that's not a requirement for the final project. If there's a different kind of article that you want to work on, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm wondering if, uh, what Sarah, do you want to maybe just do a quick poll? Uh, do you want to, can people just say yes or no of whether they feel like they have a, an idea of what article they might work on? Uh, and if anyone has any, seeing four people have an idea, a couple people don't, so we got three people who don't. So EJ, Effie, Proctor, and Trish, um, can you maybe let us, uh, let me know um, if there's anything that I could do to help? Uh, are you, do you feel like you just need to think it over some more, or do you need a little bit more guidance in choosing an article? and you can give me a, a uh, an idea right now, but of course, oh, okay, Trish, you say I just need, need more time to do some homework. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, okay, looks like you all just need to think it over a little more. So that's, that's perfectly fine, and please feel free to use the class discussion page uh, to help, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help you think it through. Um, so if you have a, a couple different ideas and you want to kind of know what might be, um, a manageable project or what might be a really big project, things like that, feel free to throw some ideas our way and, and we can talk it over. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so if, y if your team wants to all work on an article together, that is wonderful. And um, and certainly, if uh, if your team brings an article up on the quality scale and uh, and you've all contributed to it, that's certainly uh, plenty for you all to earn the badge. Um, so I, I think that would be excellent uh, if you all want to do that. And then, if people in the team want to work on different articles, uh, I would still hope that your team is a good. Uh, group of people to ask questions of and ask ask for reviews. So you might want to sort of informally ask for review after you've done a fair amount of work. Uh, you might want someone to take a look at the article and offer suggestions or feedback on the stuff that you've done or suggestions about where to go next. So you can always do that through the articles talk page and the class discussion page, but your teammates uh, would be a really good resource there as well. So uh, we've, we've passed the end of the hour here, and I'd like to wrap it up, um, unless there are any other questions that are really important for people to, uh, to get going on this. So I think, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up then, and we will be meeting for the lab session, uh, as always, in 47 hours, so on Thursday or Friday, depending which hemisphere you're in. Uh, so I hope to see you there, and hopefully some of you will have started on these articles and we can really get into some, uh, just roll up our sleeves and really start looking at some articles. It's this, this is usually where the class starts to get fun when people are um, working on a, a wide variety of articles and, and really start bringing some interesting ideas and questions to discuss in the lab sessions. So uh, I, I really hope to see you. Okay, sounds good. And then next week, we're going to have uh, the first of two sessions where we're going to have a panel discussion. So we're going to invite in uh, some experts to, uh, to talk to you about their work on Wikipedia. So uh, if we don't see you in the lab, we'll see you next week at the same time.
Take care, everybody, and see you then.